Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. We're doing this gangster style in my <laughs> pickup truck in North Dakota. I was not uh, actually kicked off the last feed uh, by Dapple or anybody else. Believe it or not, it's so cold in North Dakota that the, co the cold will zap the battery out of your phone. My battery was only at 55%, but when you're outside for a long time, the phone dies. So uh, we had to warm it up and charge it up again. So we're gonna do this in here. Uh, turned around to uh, Vanessa Castle. So Vanessa, you're a water protector. You've been here since October? Yes. Okay, so uh, I've interviewed you before. Um, and you, on uh, two days ago, when the 75 were arrested, were not arrested. I was not. Right, so talk about uh, just that day uh, you were there, but when uh, all the water protectors that had set up that camp, uh, I guess when the police had asked them to leave, you had left, correct? Correct. So uh, what happened next? Um, I went live on my phone and just recorded the sequence of events that unfolded um, on Talk a little louder. On 1806 and sang and prayed for the police and National Guard and continued to stay in prayer like we always do. And mm -hmm praying for our people that were choosing to stay up on top of the hill. Right. So obviously, like, if you were not in the proximity of the 76 others that were arrested, you were not there for the riot, as they say, which was really people just with their teepees and praying. praying. Um, so I actually uh, saw you the next day. I was here looking for a hearing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into all the details because you haven't spoken mm -hmm. with your lawyer yet. But the bottom line is it, you were not arrested with Chase and these other people. You were at the courthouse like me. They were doing a bunch of jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. uh, trying to throw us off the trail when the hearing would be. First, we were told Correct. 9 a.m., then 1.30, then nothing. Yeah. So you were at the courthouse uh, with me and that that's where you were arrested. We won't really get into the details because again, you haven't spoken with your lawyer yet, mm -hmm. but what are they charging you with? Um, right now, they are charging me with inciting a riot. Have they explained why they are charging you with that? Um, y yes, the paperwork does state why they are charging me with it and I would rather not talk about it. Okay, so <clears throat> the, um, like Chase said, he feels that they're trying to railroad him. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, he, he's considered a spiritual leader, this and that. Uh, did they, you were you were near him the day of? Yes. They um, saw you with him? Multiple times. Um, I was on the bridge with the negotiations with the other um, people. Um, there were other people that went down there to the bridge that you know spoke to the police officers asking what their intentions were. And I was there purely just to document what was going to be said. And so they, they did identify me with Chase and the other people that came to the bridge multiple times. So Jordan is saying this, not her, but basically they saw that she was with Chase. Chase, uh, they have worked together uh, before, not with demonstrations, just like work for a living. Um, so essentially they connected you with Chase. Mm -hmm. And when they saw you at the courthouse, oh, She's here, we could grab her. That, that's what it seems like to me. That's what it seems like, yes. Okay. Um, and overall, you, you know, they say inciting a riot. You, as you've been here uh, for the last few months, have you had any incidents? Have you had any issues? No, I haven't. I have, this is the first time I've been arrested. Um, I mean, obviously I've been maced on the front lines. You have video of that. Yes. Um, I, was they, that an, I was that annoying guy <laughs> trying to interview you as you got maced. Yeah, things like that. Um, but I, this was the first time I've been arrested. And I literally was working on trying to get our water protectors out and or finding out when their hearings were and when their bonds were. And I was working with the system here, with the court system, and had entered and exited the building multiple times when all of a sudden I have a warrant. And you, you're what, in your 20s? 30s. Oh, wow, you look good. And uh, don't have an arrest record. I've been here. You've been doing a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. Prayer, helping out camp, all that stuff. So, essentially, uh, your your case is a perfect example. If you're associated with what they perceive as the wrong person, mm -hmm. you're at, and you just go to try and support that person at the mm -hmm. courthouse, you, they pretty much could say, "Oh, we got her," and that, let's arrest. That's her. what it seems like they're doing. Yes, they're targeting a specific group of people that they are calling a rogue group, mm -hmm. and so. And I've seen it because I sat through uh, a hearing three days ago, where 
if you're a leader in camp, you know, they can, whoever they appoint is the leaders in camp, they use terms like agitators. Mm -hmm. uh, the judge actually used the term ringleader. Uh, I actually confronted an ATF officer and I asked, is it illegal to be a spiritual leader or protest in America? Of course, he wouldn't answer me. Mm -hmm. But it seems that in Morton County, uh, if you're a, a leader in camp, that even without evidence, they just say, well, people are following you and mm -hmm. you're pulling their strings. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that might be what they're basically trying to take bad, take the leaders off the battlefield, so to speak. And they're trying to silence our voices. We're the ones who are seen in the public eye in these live feeds and, and you know, speaking out and giving the people here who don't have a voice and don't have that platform a voice. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that are, you know, giving those people that voice or actually able to tell the world this is what's going on. Even though we're not the ones making the decisions or leading this camp, mm -hmm. they're trying to silence that. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, you're from Washington State. Uh, before you came here, what, what was your life? Did, did, what did you do for a living, that kind of thing? I was a full-time um, student when I came here, but before that, I'm a social worker. I did CPS and ICW, Indian Child Welfare. Because so. you don't seem like a dangerous, like inciting a riot <laughs> kind of person to me. Yeah, okay. I'm not. Just trying to set, <laughs> yeah. set the stage Yeah, here. no, I, I work with children, and I try to help the Native American families and making sure that the state follows you know, our equal laws back home and you know, protecting our Native American children and families and keeping them together. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, you're, you're like Chase, it's a class C felony, so you'd be facing five years yep. uh, in prison. Yes. Uh, I'm not gonna ask, because obviously you're scared. <laughs> I would be too. But um, overall, uh, obviously you're gonna have legal representation, this mm -hmm. and that. But what do people need to know? Because a lot of people ask me, what can I do? Should I come back? Should I donate more money? Should I should, you know, get in a fight with my crazy uncle, Rep Republican <laughs> uncle? I mean, day after day, I've only been back for a week, and I'm just hearing about this guy's charged with terrorism for trying to get a guy holding an AR-15 to yeah. remove his gun. Or this guy uh, rammed somebody off the road who is mm -hmm. literally a dapple worker trying to run over a person. This guy... Uh, uh, this guy, the cop says, told me he lit gasoline, uh, poured gasoline, yet there's no evidence he even said that. It's just concocting evidence. We see this in Baltimore with black people. We, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's disgusting, but not new. What do people need to know? I mean, if you have the support to donate funds, we need money for our legal funds and our, our legal fees. Um, donating to Last Real Indians, Lakota People's Law Project, our Water Protectors Collective, all of those things, we need funding to help all of our people face our up and coming trials, our legal representation, our travel back and forth from wherever we're from if we end up going home. A lot of us are not being allowed back on the property um, with our conditions. So, you know, they're going to be traveling back and forth. So if you are able to send those funds, then that is the most helpful at this point because it's going to be a lot of money with legal fees. So that's Last Real Indians, Lakota's People Law Project and the other one? the Water Protectors Collect Legal Collective. Right, and there were above more than 70 other people charged, but they were charged with criminal pe trespassing, which is a misdemeanor, so Chase- And engaging in a riot. Most oh. people were charged with both. Okay, but you guys were charged with inciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. And uh, the last, last thing I wanna talk about is, you know, it seems to me this is much bigger now than just DAPL. Obviously, that's yeah. been the main focus, but like I talked to with Chase, mm -hmm. you got them trying to help the native reservations. There's a bill now to basically s the state to seize control of native reservations, Correct. which if that goes through, that's a guinea pig for the rest of the country to do that. And Correct. we know our president wants to essentially drill baby drill mm -hmm. and reservations have a lot of oil. Yeah. Um, there's also a bill that North Dakota is trying to get through to lower the threshold for reporting oil spills. It came out recently that there was 300 oil spills in two years and only one was reported yeah. to the public. Uh, what, what are your thoughts just on bigger picture? Uh, North Dakota's corrupt, I mean, yeah. I'll say it. Uh, and it, they're not hiding it. Mm -hmm. North Dakota is a whole nother world. Like I've never thought that this could even happen. Um, the things that are happening up here are very representative of what this administration, the Trump administration is doing. And North Dakota is very isolated in those things because being from Washington, a very liberal state where our government to government relationships are amazing compared to here. Um, we also have our struggles as well, but it makes me thankful for where I'm from 
and the relationships that our tribal governments have with our state government systems. So thankfully, um, you know, I'll be, I'll, we'll be going home eventually to Washington State and be working on things that we have going on there because we have water wars going on at home as well. And we have a pipeline coming into the port of Vancouver and possibly Cherry Point, um, which is right below the Lummi Indian Reservation in Washington State. So that will be increasing the tanker traffic, the oil tanker traffic, the boats going out to sea by over 500% through the Salish Sea and through the Straits of Juan de Fuca, which is my front yard. Our fishing grounds are in the Straits of Juan de Fuca. So by increasing the probability of 500% more tanker traffic, that's putting all of our fishing ground and everything we use to survive as coastal people at risk. And that's it, the main income for most a lot of our people is fishing. And that's how we survive as far as like what we eat. So this is a huge thing for us. And like me coming out here, I came out here to, to fight this pipeline and to for our future generations. And now I possibly might have to go home to fight a pipeline back home. So North Dakota is just a whole nother world. And it's shown me how corrupt the system can be because, you know, I've been living in a little box at, up in Washington where we have good relationships with our governments and North Dakota is not that at all. Tell it to me. So just to remind you, the police department here, and again, if they're watching, arrest me for journalism, go ahead. Um, this police department was offered from energy transfer partners publicly to pay for their overtime and to pay for their everything. I, there's no way for me to know if they accepted. Uh, police departments aren't like politicians that have to disclose their funding. They, I mean, the oil company is basically saying, hey, go out and do our bidding, you know, brutalize some people, up, we'll pay your bills. So this is, uh, it's not even corruption, it's crime. This is crime going on. These officers are the ones perpetrating the crimes. They're supposed to be executing the law, not breaking the law. Um, you know, listen, I'm not going to tell you that there's never been a crime perpetrated by a water protector because I don't know, and it would be dishonest. Uh, in, in an eight-month battle, uh, there were uh, very rare cases where cars were burnt on fire in many of those cases by water protectors. In many of those cases, they did it to keep the fucking police away because they're coming to tear gas you. It's called, it, that's a strategy. Um, but by and large, I mean, it's not even close. I've been here six times. It's 95% of it is these law law enforcement uh, attacking uh, unarmed people. So that's the backdrop here. It, it's, we, uh, we were talking off camera. It's like, sometimes it's just like, you can't even believe where you are. You can't believe what you're seeing because it seems like some dystopian horror movie, but it's reality. I mean, it's happening here every day. Frankly, the judges are, are kind of in on it uh, and the cops are obviously in on it. So. Uh, yes, donate to those people, but you got to raise awareness as well. It, it, not just sharing on social media, but in person, go, t calling your legislator. If you're in New York, get Chuck Schumer on the phone. He loves going on MSNBC to rail Donald Trump. What's his view? What's going on? Nancy Pelosi. I mean, don't even bother with Republicans. They're not going to do anything. The Democrats are supposed to be the ones protecting the people. They, they talk a good game. So why don't you call your legislator? Uh, if you check my Facebook posts from last night, Jordan Sheridan, I put every number you need. Morton County Sheriff, the Army Corps, Department of Justice, the Governor of North Dakota. Flood them and don't stop. 